In this video, we're going to go over the basics of painting. You need the following items. Two paint brushes, a round brush and a flat brush. The round brush is kind of pointy and the flat brush is flat across the top. You need a piece of paper where you've labeled the main six colors we're going to use. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. I want you to draw a triangle and a square using a ruler, and I want you to draw a curved line so we can practice painting over a curved line in a controlled way. You need a palette with the primary colors. I have phthalo blue, yellow, bright red, white, and black. I have a cup of water and I have two paper towels. The first thing we're gonna do is practice color mixing. Let's use the primary colors first. So take some red paint, you don't need much, and paint a small swatch underneath your label for red. It doesn't have to be super neat. After you switch the colors when you're painting, you need to rinse your brush in the water. Wipe the water off on the side of the cup and dry it off on the paper towel. If you still have some color on your brush when you wipe it, then you need to rinse it again. If not, you're good to go. I like to keep my paper towels flat. If you scrunch your paper towels up and you wipe your paintbrush off on them when they're scrunched up, you tend to get your paint everywhere. It'll get on the handle of your brush and then it gets on your hands. So it's easier if you can just keep your paper towels flat. When you wipe your paintbrush off on the paper towel, it'll get wet. Next time you wipe it, just wipe it in a different place. And if you fill up the whole paper towel, you can always lay down one on top of it. So now let's paint the yellow swatch. Make sure your paintbrush is rinsed out really well. If you have any leftover paint in your brush, you're gonna see it when you paint the yellow. Get some yellow paint and paint it underneath your yellow label. When you're finished, Wipe off the brush, so wipe off the paint that you can from your brush and then rinse it off. Next, you'll dip it in some blue paint and paint that swatch. Now we're ready to start mixing the secondary colors. Rinse your brush out first. The palette that I'm using is the styrofoam breakfast tray that students didn't use this morning. They were going to be thrown away anyway, so we'll use them as a palette first. That way, when we clean up, we can just throw them away without having to clean up the paint. If we don't have any of those, we typically use the plastic palette with the circle wells. I have one palette with paint in it and another one in case I need more space to mix colors. I'm going to mix orange first using yellow and red. Since yellow is the lighter color of the two, I'll scoop some of that one and add it here. I'll spread it around a little and then I'll add my red to it. Since red is darker, you only need a very little bit of it. I'll scoop from the edge so I don't mess up my red paint since I'll be using it later. I'll mix that red in and decide if it's too red or too yellow or if it's an orange that I like. Right now I think it's a little too dark, so I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow. Once you get the orange that you like, you're ready to add it to your paper. For these swatches, I don't mind if the brush strokes are showing. When we paint the shapes below, I'll show you how to blend out the brush strokes. When you're painting, if you get too much paint on your brush and it's too thick, just wipe some off on the paper towel and then you can go back 
and paint over it to smooth out any brush strokes if, if you're trying to make it neat. So before we mix up the green, we'll need to rinse our paintbrush out again. If your water starts getting too dirty, you can always pour it out and get new water. To make green, I'm gonna need yellow and blue. So yellow's the lighter color, so I'm gonna scoop that first and lay it down where I plan to mix it. Then barely dip the paintbrush in the blue before mixing it. You really don't need very much. Then you can just keep adding blue as you need to until you get the green that you want. Once you've got the green you like, go ahead and add it to your paper. So the last color we're gonna mix is violet. Violet and purple are the same thing. Since red is lighter than blue, I'll start with the red and then I'll add blue to it. So I'll scoop the red up and put it right here. And then when I go to get the blue, I'm just gonna get a very little bit. It's easier to just keep adding a little bit of blue to get it to be more purple. If I get too much blue, then I'm gonna need a lot more red to go back the other way. So once I've got the purple that I like, I'll go ahead and add that to my paper. This purple that I've mixed is showing fairly dark. If you like a lighter purple, it's okay with me if you add a little bit of white to lighten it up. The next thing I want you to learn is how to control the paintbrush. Let's paint this triangle first. Since we haven't mixed any tints or shades, let's make a tint. Tint is when you mix white with a color. Pink is a tint of red, so let's mix some pink. If you were making a monochromatic painting and you chose to use red, you would mix a variety of tints and shades by mixing red with white and black. You can mix your paint on either palette. You just need to find an open space. Start with white paint because it's lighter than red and you're gonna need a bit more of it. Once you've laid that down, scoop up a little bit of red and mix that in. You can decide how dark or how light you want your tint to be. If you want it to be a darker pink, then just add more red. And if you want it to be lighter, add white. You need a decent amount of your mixed tint or you're going to run out. If you run out, it's really hard to mix exactly the same tint. So I think I've got enough paint now. I just need to make sure it's mixed up really well. Because if it's not, and for one minute I paint from this one area that has more white, and then another time I paint from an area that has more pink, it's not going to be even. So I'm going to mix this up pretty good, and one of the things I want you to focus on while painting the triangle is to get all one even color without brush strokes. First we're going to use a small round paintbrush just to paint the inside of the edges. Because there are acute angles in the corners, it can be hard to paint and stay in the lines. You don't want a big glob of paint on your paintbrush because that can be hard to control. So I'm gonna twist some of that paint off. I'm going to point the paintbrush directly at the inside of one of the angles in the triangle. If you look closely, you can see that there's some space between my paintbrush and the pencil line. That way I can edge my paintbrush closer and closer to the pencil line without going over it. So after I've pulled some of the paint out from the corner, then I can line up my brush so that it's parallel to the edge 
of the pencil line. And then I'm gonna to try to paint right along the edge. You can also point your paintbrush towards the edge like I'm doing here. Both ways work. You can do whatever works best for you. If you're not focused on your work, it's very easy to make a mistake. So over here I can see that the paint is a little thicker and you can see lines in the paint. If I wait until it dries I won't be able to smooth out that texture. So I have to spread it out and smooth it out while the paint is still wet because it dries pretty quick. Now I either have to rotate my hand so that I can angle it to point towards the next angle, or I can rotate my paper, and I think it's easier to rotate the paper. Once I've painted up to the edges, I have an area that's not painted in the middle. I could continue with the smaller brush, or I could switch to my larger flat brush. After I've got all the paint on it, I'll keep going over the paint until I've smoothed out all of the brush strokes. If you have too much paint on your brush, you can always wipe some of it off on a paper towel and then come back and keep smoothing out the brush strokes. Okay, now let's paint the square. Let's paint this one a shade. A shade is when you add black to a color. And I think I wanna paint this a shade of yellow for two reasons. One, when you mix black paint that we have with yellow, it looks a little funky and I want you to know that now. And the other reason is that our yellow paint is super transparent and it tends to need more than one layer to look opaque. So I wanna show you that too. First, I'm gonna scoop some of the yellow paint and place that where I'm gonna mix the colors. And then after that, I'm gonna get a little bit of black. Our black has a little bit of a blue base, which means when you mix it with the yellow, it takes on a greenish hue. It's not a super pretty color, So you can do what we did before and paint the edges with a small paintbrush before filling them in, or I'll show you how to use a flat brush. This works better when you have a right angle and you don't have to get into smaller angles like we did with the triangle. When I start, I'll hold the brush a little bit away from the line, just like we did when we did the triangle. This way, when the paint presses down on the paper, it spreads out and it won't go past the line. When you have a lot of paint on your paintbrush, it's called a loaded paintbrush. And sometimes it's got too much paint on it, so I'm kind of moving down and basically wiping the paint off into the square. And once it's not quite so loaded, then I can start edging my way up toward the pencil line. So even with a steady hand, I just went over the line just a little bit. If that happens, you have a couple of choices. You can leave it and later when you're painting the background, you can paint over the mess up. Or if you're able to extend the line out just a little bit by making the square a little bit bigger, you can hide it that way too. So 
So your goal for this square is to have a solid square painted with as little brush strokes as possible. If you look closely, you can see that the yellow paint is so transparent that it looks streaky. You see how solid and opaque that pink triangle looks? That's because our white paint is super thick. So when we mixed it with the red, it thickened it up and we only needed one layer. If your color is transparent and you don't mix it with white to make it thicker, you need to paint more than one layer after it dries. Make sure it's thoroughly dry though, or you'll be pulling up the paint that's there, making it even more transparent. While we're waiting to paint the second layer, we'll practice painting a curvy line. You can paint it with whatever color you want. I'm going to choose blue. And I want you to do this so you can practice painting over a line. You may need to do this for a variety of reasons. And sometimes it's hard to make the line look smooth and not messy. And there are a couple of tricks to it. So you need a loaded paintbrush. And sometimes it's easier if you actually mix water in it. Right now I don't have any water mixed in and if you look, I keep running out of paint quickly and have to keep dipping it back in to load the paintbrush again. So sometimes if you add water, the drag is better. Like you can, you can paint that line a little bit longer before you have to reload it. The only, the only down to that is that sometimes it thins it out so you might need a second layer. So I've, I've got a little bit of water. I'm going to dip it in there. I'm going to add it to my palette. I'm going to dip the blue in it and get a nice feel to it. And then I'm going to go back in and continue the line. So if you look, I'm not, I'm not starting it where exactly where I stopped. I actually overlap it a little bit. I go back a little bit before I stopped and it helps me continue the line a little bit better without it, it looking like it stopped and started. So I keep mixing water into it, keep going back in, and if you'll watch, I can get a little longer of a line out when I've got water in it. It just goes a little bit farther. I don't have to reload as often. So I'm going to make a little mistake on purpose to show you how you can fix it. So I press a little bit harder down at the end of that and you see how it got thicker. So you can fix it two different ways. You can either, whenever you paint the background around it, just paint over it to make it thinner, or you can gradually blend it into your thinner line so that it looks like it goes thicker and thinner on purpose. You just keep modifying it until it looks like it was meant to do that. To make the line a little bit thicker, I just have to press the brush down just a little bit harder onto the paper. And that widens the brush out and increases the thickness of the line. So now my square is pretty dry and I think it's time to go back over it. At this point, I don't have enough paint left over to add a layer, so I need to mix some more. If you're painting over an entire layer, it doesn't have to match the shade exactly, it just needs to be close. The reason I'm rotating and painting and rotating and painting is because I see lines of thicker paint that I'm trying to spread out to eliminate texture. The last thing I wanna show you is how easily you can paint over a darker color, even if you're painting over it with a lighter color. So 
first we're gonna add some white paint to this shade of yellow that we made. So add some white paint to make it lighter. And then after we're done mixing that to make it lighter than the square that we already painted, we're gonna paint a stripe that starts over the square and gradually work down below so that you can see how the lighter color can still paint over the darker color. So this is dry. I'm just gonna line my brush up right here. This is what the color looks like straight on the white paper. And then I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you paint right over that green. So at first it's a, it looks a little thin I honestly think it's because the green underneath is not quite dry, but it's mostly dry. I think I can pretty much cover it. So if I get some more paint and go over it a little bit more, or maybe pull the paint in a different direction, it's going to cover it easily. The reason I'm showing you this is because I'll have students say, I messed up. And I'm like, well, paint over it. Paint covers paint. And they're like, but it's dark. And light paint will cover dark paint fine. It, I mean... It, it might take two layers, but generally our lighter paint is thicker than our darker paint. Like when you mix white with it, it's going to be thicker and it's going to cover more easily. So you can always paint over something. And that's the main reason why I want you to do this last bit right here. Just so that you see that you can paint over a darker color with a lighter color. When it's time to clean up, if you've used a palette that's styrofoam, we were gonna throw this away anyway. So you don't have to clean that up at all, just throw it away. If you used one of the plastic palettes, don't rinse the paint down the sink. If you just set it aside, someone else can use it if they wanna use it, and if they don't, it'll dry up in the palette and then it's super easy and actually kind of fun to peel out. So you can take like a paint scraper and just like dip the corner up underneath the piece that you're trying to peel out. And once you kind of get it loose, it just peels right on out. So if you used a palette, just set it to the side on the counter. Somebody else will use it or it'll dry up and we'll just peel them out later. To wash your brushes out, you actually need a little bit of dish soap for this. So before you do that, wipe off all the excess paint and then throw that paper towel away. And then you just need like a drop of the dish detergent. You really don't need much at all. So rinse them out first, get a drop of dish detergent, put it on top of your paintbrushes, and you really have to actually massage your paintbrush. There's paint that gets all in the middle of the paintbrush that you can't see. And when you're squeezing the paintbrush like this, you can squeeze that paint out and then rinse it out with water. You could see how yellow it was when I was washing it before, all that yellow paint that was still in there. So if I were to wash it again, it might still have a little bit of paint, but you'll see that it's mostly just running clear right now. So you probably need to wash it once, maybe twice. Rinse them out good and then you can put them away. Usually you can just lay them on the towel that's next to the sink so they can dry. Or if you put them in one of the plastic cups where they go, make sure you put them in with the bristles pointing up. If you put them in with the bristles pointing down, they sit like this and they get bent and they lose their shape. To clean out your cup, just pour your water out, fill it back up with water, swish it around a couple of times, and then just pour that out. Then you can put it upside down in the drying rack and leave it to dry. And that's it. That's the basics of painting.